Ms. Searle. Madam Deputy President, uh, on behalf of the Labor opposition, I rise to oppose the third reading of these bills. Uh, the opposition applied itself diligently and seriously uh, as befits the important subject matter of the uh, serious crime prevention orders and the organised crime and public safety orders proposed uh, in the two bills before the House. Uh, we did so because of the very serious and important objective of securing public safety and dealing with and disrupting serious and organised <coughs> crime, an objective uh, that we have uh, a significant record on and uh, an objective with which we support. However, uh, when creating novel and innovative mechanisms for law enforcement bodies uh, to deal with the serious and pervasive nature of organised crime, we have to make sure that there is proper supervision and proper safeguards and checks and balances to ensure that in our desire to protect the public, we do not also harm the public, that we also provide protections for persons who, although under suspicion, may turn out to not be guilty. Um, with that in mind, we proposed a series of sensible and balanced amendments uh, to ensure the probity, the integrity and public confidence in the two regimes of orders proposed in the bills. It is regrettable that the government did not find within itself the maturity or the bipartisan, or should I say the non-partisan spirit, to embrace at least the most important of the amendments which we proposed in good faith. It is, we think, regrettable that the government uh, does not wish to only have the Supreme Court making serious crime prevention orders to restrict the classes of applicant to the DPP, to at least have those who would be subject to such orders limited to those persons who knowingly engage in prescribed conduct. That the government finds it necessary to abrogate the hearsay rule on the admission of evidence, that the government does not wish to provide any appeal mechanism for persons who are to be subject to public safety orders, that the government thinks it's fair and reasonable that relatively junior police officers from the rank of inspector are able to make such important and powerful orders without the persons to be subject to them having the right to be heard or the right to appeal against any of those decisions. And I think most regrettably the government does not feel the need to enact in statutory form protections for vulnerable persons. <coughs> persons who are under 18, persons who have impaired intellectual or physical functioning. We also regret that the government <coughs> doesn't provide a clear statutory protection for those within our community who wish to engage in the lawful pursuits of non-violent advocacy, protest, dissent or those working people striving for better conditions through industrial disputation. The, the touching on those subjects uh, in the public safety orders regime is very sketchy and leaves many persons, we think, at significant risk of this legislation being used to curtail people's implied constitutional rights, their freedom, implied freedom of association and political communication. We have done our best through the power of argument and the framing of amendments to address the concerns we've had with the legislation, <coughs> to improve it, to make it properly fit for purpose and to make it in a form where everyone in the community can have confidence in the probity and the integrity of the regime of orders to be created by these two statutes. It's regrettable that the government has chosen to play politics with this and to not to embrace at least some, perhaps the most important of the amendments, but to simply set them all aside and hide behind its assertions that everything will be all right. It's not all right when you create powerful tools to be used by law enforcement, but no one has the right to have those reviewed by the independent courts. This is what, has, this is what will be created with the public safety orders.
Um, it is an overreach. The government in these two bills is simply going too far, and I think most of you opposite know this. And let's hope uh, uh, that uh, the legislation, when enacted, is used sparingly and appropriately and without mistake. But any system is only as good as the people in it, and everybody is fallible. <coughs> any system created by people usually will have mistakes. Most of those mistakes, the most obvious of them, could have been addressed in the framing and creation of this legislation, but the government has chosen to take the low road and not the high road, and this is to be regretted.